Hello and welcome to another video by the MXQ Project. My name's Matthew. So today we're going to be running LibreOGEC 7.0. Now this is running Jarvis, as you probably already know, and this gaming system is built specifically for this. Please ensure you either dual boot in your MXQ S85 or you've got it installed onto NAND before attempting to install this. This won't run on Android, okay? As well as that, this is going to allow you to run all sorts of different consoles, such as PlayStation 1 and 64 and so on and so forth. So, let's get straight to it. Hello, so, let's just get straight into it. This is Libre running Cody 16.1. Make sure you're running um, Jarvis because the gaming build is specifically built for this version. We're not quite round to making it for Krypton just yet. So, just like any other build, we're going to install it the usual way. And we'll head over to File Manager, and we're going to add source, and it is HTTP MXQ Project. Again, I'm going to leave all the all the information in the um, in the description of the video. Forward slash files. And finally, forward slash. Click OK. And there we go. So go to settings, go to add ons, install from zip file, repository dot the MXQ project, and then finally install the zip file. Now sometimes this may take a while to actually install, sometimes it's dead quick. It, it just depends what it's feeling like. There we go. That was quick. Install from uh, repository. Go down to the MXQ project repo. Video add-ons. And then we install the wizard. And wait for that to be enabled. We probably want to install a few more things. But that's it. And then come out of that. Back to the main menu of config and skin. And what we need to do is we're going to go into programs to the MXQ project wizard and then there's two builds here the one the build you want is this one here it's got like a joypad style controller just there so click on that one and then wait for it to download this may take a while so what I'll do is I'll skip right to the next bit okay so now you've installed the MXQ gaming experience onto the Brolec um, and this is what you'll be presented with when it finally reloads. These are all our consoles, as you can see. We've got a lot more than that, actually, but um, it's the way it displays. And the thing is about emulating is it's quite complex, or can be quite complex. But to get you started, we've installed something called Internet Archive ROM Launcher. That was built by Zach Morris, so thank you, Zach, Zach for that. Uh, and that's just going to let us easily get straight into gaming without you know, too much complex too much complexity to it really you will need a Xbox 360 controller it will need to be wired as well USB 2.0 it will run with other controllers like PS3 controllers and so on and some generic controllers as well and you can tweak those settings as well within RetroArch which is just there now if you've not got any experience with RetroArch or anything like that I'd recommend you go and check out Loop Retro and follow their guides. We'll probably be eventually putting up our own stuff, etc. But again, it is quite complicated. There's a lot of different settings to get your head around. But that's emulation, that's the way it is. So if I load up Internet Archive ROM Launcher, what it'll do is it'll simply display our uh, consoles. And if I will say, on Sonic, 
I could go to Sega Genesis to see it. And what this will do is it will just pull off all the games that are available. And as you can see it's really dead simple just to get playing games straight away. So these are all our games as you can see. So if I try and find Sonic. find it eventually. There we go, so there's Sonic there. So if I click into Sonic the Hedgehog, the first one, it'll display this screen, it'll give you a bit of information, it'll eventually load some images as well. And what you do is you just go down to launch, just here, click on there and it'll download the game. Now depending on your connection speed it might, let's see there we go, it's pretty instant but Depends on your connection speed, it might be slow, especially for like games like PlayStation 1 games because they're quite big, obviously. As you can see, it just launches the game straight away, so you can grab your controller. Now, this is this controller here is plug and play, so you can plug it in and just play the game straight away without configuring it. Some of the games will need them um, tweaked a little bit. As you can see, I can play Sonic. Go. So, to get into RetroArch, like I said before, all the different settings, on this controller, creep down this, and then click that button next there, and it will bring up this menu. And as you can see, we've got all our different settings, car settings, we've got configuration, we've got how to save, save part of the game, and adjust video and stuff like that. It is, it is quite complex, it uh, can take you a while to get used to it. But as well as this, this menu also allows you to return to Cody as well. As you can see, we've got quit to Cody there. So, and to come out, go back to the game again, hold down that and click on that, and you can start playing the game again. And then we can go quit back to Cody, and then it'll just shut everything down, as you can see. So there we have it. That is a bit, very brief rundown of how to use the system. And if you get stuck, you can come over to the mxqproject.com. I've got a bit more information on there. Or the Facebook group. Again, the developer Scott Marie is on there. He's the guy who put all this together. As well as that, um, obviously, we've got we've got Jokers as well, who's built the actual retro arch for the S85 processor. So big thanks to him as well as Samus, and obviously Lib Retro who develops retro arch as well. So big thank you to all of them people as well. So. There's a lot to help out on the Facebook group, so we'll see you on that.